Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Snap Material Podcast. That's right. We're coming back at you here. It's August of 2023, and we're going to get you ready for the upcoming season, and we're going to talk a little bit about the previous season. I think that's where we're going to start, is talking about the previous season. I am your host, Jesse Starcher, and of course with me this evening is Evan Bevins. Evan, we just got through with Rise of the Phoenix. Actually, no, we're still in the the process of that. It doesn't end until the beginning of next week, as far as we're recording. Limping across the finish line. (laughs) Yeah, right. The upcoming season is going to be upon us here next week, so that will be that will be uh, that will be interesting. But yeah, we've pretty much experienced all of Rise of the Phoenix, which started July third of twenty twenty three. So here we'll talk about uh, what the season was like, and we'll also all right, maybe we'll talk about what we unlocked during the season or our cars that we acquired. You know, we we kind of did this before. We, usually we do a preview of the season, and then we kind of do a review of the season because we're all excited about the cars that are going to be hitting, and then afterwards we're going to find out what our experience was uh, if we ran into any of those cars that were out there uh, that got released during the season. So we will start with the Phoenix Force, which was the premier card for last year, from last year, last season. Um, <laughs> felt like a year. Uh, it was a long season. Se- it was a long season, actually. I mean, we're there. There was five cards that released total, and the first one, like I said, being Phoenix Force, which was a. It started out as a five six, but uh, in one of the updates, they dropped it to a four five. Oh, that's right. They did a quick because people weren't using it very much. Good point. I remember that being like one of the first times that they had really nerfed a card, if you want to call it nerfing. I mean, uh, it, it really brought a card down. Uh, shortly after being dropped. So anyway, it was a, it, it is now a four five and on reveal revive one of your destroyed cards and merge with it. And that card can move each turn. I think my biggest criticism last time was that if it was a five, six, like you would bring it out on turn five and maybe be able to move it uh, in, you know, one turn unless yeah. you had, unless you had, um, unless you had magic out there, but Which would be hard to do since you couldn't use her until recently before turn five. Right, exactly. Uh, So this actually does help a lot. Them dropping it down to a four or five gives it the opportunity to get out there and bring back a destroyed card. Usually multiple, man. Yes. Yeah, that that was my note. I can see as well. You, you've experienced the multiple man combo. I think it was that was the first time when I realized, OK, this could be a threat because you bring if multiple man gets destroyed, then Phoenix Force brings it back, adds the five to it, the five power to it. And now all of a sudden, what is multiple man? A two, three? Yeah. So you'd so be I'll, an eight and you can drop an eight and, and pick up move them anywhere. One, so. Yeah, you, you just move them anywhere you want. So you got two turns. You can drop an eight there. OK, I move over here. There's an eight and I'm going to move them over here. There's an eight spreads out this massive power pretty well before turn six hits but uh, i think i had somebody do like come up with i mean maybe even three or four of them in one game but that was like the only time it really made much of i mean i I, i'm I'm sure it may have made a difference here and there but it wasn't something that i was seeing a lot or losing to a lot or anything like that you know nimrod i remember when nimrod came out he was immediately part of destroy decks and he's still part of destroy decks and i still don't have him but I, I mean, I, I never saw Phoenix Force as frequently as, as Nimrod. I mean, now he's easier to get, sure. But I mean, even compared to when he he was the you know the exclusive card, he uh, Phoenix Force never approached that level. Yeah, it's a card that's playable, but doesn't you know shift the whole game. So exactly. All right. Next up was Jean Grey, who was a three cost, three power card, and her ability was ongoing. Players must play their first card here each turn if possible. Now, a friend of mine, uh, he criticized this card pretty heavily. He, he pretty much said that he's like, this is a this is a piece of junk card. He says, you, you throw it out there and it's essentially a race to fill it up. You're stuck there. The opponent's stuck there. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, well, you know, he does kind of have a point because it kind of sucks. You can't play anywhere else. Your opponent can't play anywhere else. But then I, I had learned of a strategy, basically get it filled up with little cards and then start moving cards 
that your opponent was playing there. So if you could yeah. Polaris a card or if you could somehow you Stegron it, Juggernaut it, somehow get it to where that person after – you know, you you fill it up still has like two slots that they need to play. Mm-hmm. Um, I put Negasonic Teenage Warhead down here because I mean that still clean up a spot for you and a spot for them. So that that that's kind of a offsets each other anyway. But regardless, uh, that was about the the first time where I was like, okay, well, Jean Grey would definitely be helpful if you can fill it up with one cost cards pretty easily, especially getting like Sunspot in there. Yeah, and, and, and then keeping those other cards at bay but i think i played somebody in conquest that used uh brood with her a lot play her and then fill it up oh smart okay so so right then you've got you've got it filled the other person's just sitting there stuck on that until it's filled up so it's got its advantages now as for running into it very much i think i saw her a few times and and i was just like okay whatever i mean (laughs) oh yeah that, that person was not using that strategy as far as i could tell yeah, I, I didn't see it a whole lot. I, I I know I sent you that one that was like, why won't it let me play a card here? And it was a Jean Grey variant that I didn't uh, recognize. And she was wearing right. a mask. It was the Marvel Girl costume. But um, it, again, it's it's kind of like Phoenix. It's it's interesting to try, but it doesn't. You, you didn't see everybody flock to start using that all of a sudden. I mean, that, that that's what a lot of the cards should be. I think ideally it is useful, but not so much that everybody starts making the same decks i agree i i I do agree i don't like cards that overly affect or i should say shape overly shape the metagame that's out there i want to face somebody and then i don't want to face a deck like that again for another four or five decks yeah well uh then we have echo who was a one cost two power card after your opponent plays an ongoing card here remove its abilities and yes, I did have it happen to me where I had Cosmo laid down at the same time Echo was down there. And I was like, oh, geez. So at that's least that. At least you're not playing it after Echo's been out there. I'm sure I did that a couple times. <laughs> yeah. Not realizing what was going on or what was yeah. going to happen. Right. I think that might have happened to me once with armor. I laid armor out there. Echo was laying there. And I'm like, oh, now that I think about it, I believe Echo was called in by uh, Shannon the She Devil. She oh, okay. is, so somebody played that on the opposite side of me and in an out popped echo. And I'm like, OK, this game's over. I'm already aggravated. <laughs> it didn't seem like it affected me too much. Didn't run into it very often. So can't really say that I ha- hated it. Did I want the card? I really don't know if I wanted the card. Uh, I remember us talking last time about the the insurance for yeah. like a, for for Wong and and. Again, that wasn't something that I had seen. I didn't see people employing that strategy against me, but I don't know if you did or not. But uh, what was your experience? I, I ended up buying it because that was the one out of all the cards that I, I thought would be the most useful. I wanted Jean Grey just, you know, for the whole original X-Men thing, right. classic costume and whatnot. But um, she was featured in the first spotlight caches, and that was about the time they dialed back the tokens, so... I still haven't gotten back to to three thousand. Yeah. Um. I, you know, but I I, I reasoned well. Okay. Echo, I, th- I think is going to be more useful than Jean Grey, and, and I think she is. I, I think she's easier to use, but she's she's not quite the difference maker I envisioned. Reminds me of Ghost. I was like, I got to get Ghost, and everything's going to be off. I, I almost never use Ghost, and <laughs> yeah. then I put Ghost in a deck, and I'm like, hey, maybe that'll work this time. And then eventually, I'm like, why am I using Ghost? So, and yeah, the the insurance thing that was that was my initial thought with her. I don't know that I ever actually did that. Of course, I'm not the greatest at planning ahead, um, <laughs> which is something. <laughs> <laughs> that might be useful in this game but you know a lot of times she comes up early and it's like well do, do you want to hold on to her so i'm just like well let's put her here and see what happens yeah and every once in a while something i mean she she's got little downside you know i always you know it's it's like at worst you're playing misty night yeah um, so you know it's, it's it's low risk and decent potential reward you know it's like having him baku and he actually shows up in your hand well you know you just Throw them out there for two points. You, you you could do worse. Yeah. So, but but yeah, um, I I got her got her for six thousand, and I, I I use her I use her a lot just because you know once I'm getting down to you know those one cost cards, it's if there's nothing specific to the deck, then it's like well could uh, could mess somebody up. So. All right. Well, well, let's talk about Mirage. Mirage cost two. 
and she had a power of two. On reveal, copy the lowest card in your opponent's hand into your hand and give it plus two power. And my note was, meh, just released this past week, and I can't say that I've it's been too scary. It's not been something that made me go, oh, man, not Mirage. When Mirage gets played, what goes through my head is I'm like, I immediately look at my cards and I'm like, what is yeah. the lowest power card? Because now I've got to worry about whatever that is. And as long as it isn't Spider Ham, which likely it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then hopefully I'm playing Spider Ham on, on two uh, on turn two. But anyway, it that's really kind of all. The only card I kind of worry about, any other two-cost card that I have in my hand, I could care less. Unless, it, well, I don't know, maybe it's Luke Cage I have a problem with. Now, I'm, I'm trying to remember one of my, uh, like, I, I had a bunch of higher-cost cards, so she got a three-cost card from me once. I, for, I forget yeah, what it was. So, yeah, every, every once in a while, I'm like, oh, crap, what, what'd they get? But, I mean, it's not, again, it's, it's useful but not disruptive. I, I assume if you were going to strategize... You know, you maybe you hold on to it late and hope that the person has yeah. a higher cost card in their hand and it only costs you two to lay it out. I might be able to hit 3000 before she goes out. Of course, she'll be in the shop eventually for 3000 as well. But I just I don't think she's bad. I just there's she's definitely not going to replace uh, Luke Cage in my deck, you know, unless it's for a specific deck like a, what I'm now calling the Collectasar deck. Collectasar. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Collector, Collector and Devil Dinosaur. dinosaur. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I, I stumbled on, you know, which a lot of people have probably already been reading for ages, but some of the really data driven stuff on Snap Zone and it just like made my head hurt. <laughs> and all these uh different names they have for decks that I didn't even understand. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna start Collectasar. I love it. I, I mean, you know, that's just another one that gives you an extra card in your hand. Would work well with Quinjet, Collector, Devil Dinosaur. But outside of that, if she doesn't fit in with the you know, the overall strategy, um, you know, I'm going to use Luke Cage, Spider-Ham, Psylocke, Forge. You know, it, uh, all those uh, two-cost cards are going to be on my list before I would get to Mirage. All right, well, next up and finally, I think one of my favorite cards that I've had a chance to play with in this game was Legion. Five-cost, eight-power card on reveal, Replace each other location with this one. Listen, if you less, if you heard the last show, you kn heard me gush about what I like to do with locations. I love mm -hmm. using Quake. And, of course, what we found out was like, well, there's no sense in having Quake in there anymore unless you wanted to try and trick them for some reason. But really, Quake... Or just irritate them twice. <laughs> True. I, mean, I got to thinking about that later. It's like you could, you know... You, you could mess with them once and then mess with them again. That's true. That's true. Uh, okay, so Legion shows up, and I was like, well, I'm, it's going to be a 6,000-cost card. I don't know if I want to have the tokens for it. And it turns out it's 3,000, and I had just enough. And I thought about it for a quick second, and I immediately pulled the trigger and bought Legion. I mean, really... A five eight is nothing to see, sneeze at. I'm really, yeah. I'm really surprised this was only three thousand tokens. And yeah, it, it does have a, a pretty big game changing ability. When just for example, I had I had one game I was playing and I had Luke Cage in my deck, laid out Luke Cage in one of the locations, brought your the power down of each of your cards. Mm -hmm. So had Luke Cage out there and turn six, I laid out Legion on that negative zone and it nice. went all across the board and zapped a ton of his cards and i ended up winning for it not only was it extremely useful to play with it was so fun this is the one card that i'm like okay where are these locations at what you know which one would work best to my advantage this i mean this one card has almost like three different three different abilities now depending on whatever your locations are on there like, okay, well, now I'm going to zap all everybody with negative three. Nope. You know, I hadn't thought of it that way, but that's actually pretty uh, fitting with the character. He has uh, multiple personalities, and each personality has a different power. Uh, that's right. That's right. I hadn't really thought of it till you, you put it that way, but uh, in, in that regard, I mean, you know, you never know what, uh, what power he's going to have. But yeah, I had a ton of fun with this card. I had a great time. Uh, I know that I used the bar with no name, I think twice in one day. And I just, I 
could not like fathom what the person on the other end was thinking when I snapped turn five and we got a, you know, he snapped and we're at eight and I'm just sitting there. And the only card that I had out there was something on a different location. And I just sat there and waited and waited and watched this guy (laughs) and then just laid out one card and won the game. So it's, It's a great, it's a great feeling. Um, I, and I mentioned on here that I did it with Rickety Bridge at one point, just mess with people. <laughs> and, you know, you sit there and you watch all these cards just kill, each, you know, get killed off. And then, of course, the Warrior Falls was fun too. I did that. I think I did that one today, uh, where I I Warrior Falls to everything, and I ended up having like one card that was just like one power above the other two that I was, that was on the board against me. Uh, and sure enough, I was able to kill him off and he retreated shortly after that. But man, this is a fun card. And I, I am never, I don't think I regret my purchase. I think two of my, two of the, my, my most favorite cards were only 3000, which is great. I love sitting there yeah. thinking about like the only fact that I, I you know, I, I only spent 3,000 tokens for each for Legion and Spider-Ham. Spider-Ham, I, I, I was sitting there thinking this morning, like, okay, where would I rank him? Legion is fun because he messes with the locations, and it's, it's, that's right up my alley. But Spider-Ham has made me smile so much when it comes to watching him pound the crap out of Null and just hit him with a hammer. And I'm like, yes, don't have to worry about Null this game. Thank goodness. But anyway, I'll step back. What What are your thoughts here on Legion? Well, I got him because, again, I hadn't built back up to 3,000 yet, but I got him uh, on the uh, Spotlight Cache. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I, I started tossing in some stuff. I, I want to say I pulled off the bar with no name once, but maybe I'm uh, – Maybe I'm living vicariously through you. I have had Legion mess me over more times than I've had him help me. The other day I was playing and Project Pegasus came up on turn three. And, uh, you know, I had uh, Murder World was one of the earlier locations and I wasn't doing anything with it. And so the guy played Legion on Murder World and you know, cleared oh. the whole board midway oh, through. Oh, um, another time I had... Uh, I had the abandoned mine. I had Luke Cage on it, and then three rocks. And I was I just kept playing because I had Infinite. So I'm like, well, I'll just hold off on uh, turn five, clear the mine, and then play Infinite. Right. And the guy played a uh, Legion on Monster Island, and so my rocks stayed, and I didn't get a monster there. Oh no! <laughs> oh. Oh, that sucks so, so bad. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's not a card. I don't think you can. I don't know if you can build a deck around it, but I mean, yeah, if you if you keep your eyes peeled, it 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 can be a lot of fun. Yeah. It, do, you ever, do, you, do you use them with the watcher? No, I've thought about that, but no, I have not. I guess it would give you a little bit of an advantage to know yeah. what was coming, but I mean, those. I assume it has to get revealed anyway. Well, it'll be revealed anyway before yeah. you get a chance to play it. And just help you plan ahead a little bit. I. I just like, you know, the visual contrast of a guy with no hair and a guy with all the hair. <laughs> right. And and what's great about it is also like it it opened up a whole like different way of winning and losing games. Mhm. There's so many different locations that would that impact the game that it's a it's great ways to kind of inventive ways to come up to try and win the game yeah. when you have legion in your hand so i, I just it, it kind of goes along with some of the other cards where they're useful but not game breaking i mean yeah legion can totally change the tenor of a game or he can also you know you can have locations that it where it won't make a difference or where it'll hurt you more than it'll help you so he's right he, he has the potential to change things but just the fact that he's in your deck doesn't really tilt it one way or the other right so i mean in in, in that respect i, th- I think uh, these are you know pretty balanced cards you know in in terms of being useful and interesting but not impacting the meta game a whole bunch right right all right let's move on to our locations last season so our first location that got dropped was lake hellas one cost cards have plus two power at that location. Uh, so I really only wrote one thing, which was I, I didn't hate it. It gave me an excuse during when that was the when that was the um, featured location mm-hmm. that I, I I was like, OK, here comes here comes Shanna. Here yeah. comes oh, Kesar. Yeah. Uh, so I was I was dealing. I, I was trying to do one cost decks. I was having a good time. I mean, I, I like I wasn't turning like 
everything into gold. That's for sure. I mean, or yeah. I should, you know, I, I definitely wasn't winning games over and over, but I was having a good time doing it. So I like Shanna. Shanna's one of my, she's like one of my favorite cards because it's kind of like, Oh man, what am I going to get? I get three cards now. What am I going to get? Um, Shanna, and, the she devil's like a box of chocolates, Jesse. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Uh, yes, indeed. But, Anyway, didn't hate it. Had a good time when it was out there and gave me a gave me a reason to play a different type of deck. How about you? Yeah. And it, it can be one that just, you know, can, you know, give you a little bit of an advantage one way or the other uh, occasionally in a game without without, you know, throwing everything completely off. Um, I, yeah, I, I did a lot of the same. I used my uh, my Savage Brands deck. Mm, yes. Shauna and Kazar and a lot of one cost cards. And then my my Boosters Gold which is a uh, Dazzler and Ultron and uh, Patriot. Nice. So yeah, just just looking at getting a lot of one cost cards out there and filling up filling up the, the location. So yeah, it's it, it's it's a fun one. Um, it I didn't, it, I didn't it, even it has think. an effect, but doesn't uh, doesn't you know throw everything off. I didn't even think to use Ultron. I don't know why. And I'm really surprised I didn't have somebody do that to me. Like I'm uh, that would have been perfect. Like to Ultron and fill that thing up with plus one. Or excuse me, with one cost uh, drones, and yeah. then have Kesar and and or and Mystique Patriot, or Patriot, Marvel. yeah, right, dude, that would have been great. All right, well, next up was the White Hot Room. First to fill this gets plus three max energy. And I remember uh, last month when we were talking, I, we were kind of wondering like, is it just to the end of the turn, or is it going to be to the end of the game? And we find out pretty quickly that's to the end of the game. You you get if you can get that bonus, and wow, if that was a featured location. You're looking at Sunspot is probably going to be in your deck and probably some other lower cost, if not the Brood's going to be in there yeah. to get that plus three. It kind of reminded me of the Sacred Timeline. I mean, sometimes it was definitely useful, but other times I was just like filling it up and then like I'd forget about it. I said here, one of my opponents played Wave and I played Spider-Man on turn five and I could have played two cards because I had eight energy but i'm like well no i can only play one. Oh, you were just left four factory? energy sitting on the table i forgot oh, that i had it. oh man that's rough so actually but the, but there there's a good one if the white hot room is a featured location again put wave in there and you can play two cards when your opponent can probably only play one that's true if you, if you get that that plus three i mean you know there's different types of, of cards or locations you know like pet avengers mansion is the uh lower tiered version of Avengers Mansion. So I put this one in the middle of the fill this location first. Well, I mean, Sacred Timeline, I, it, it can work. I've I've used it. I've had it help me once or twice, but that one's kind of the low end. Um, the Raft, I think, is still the best one because if you if you get that free six cost card and your opponent doesn't, well, it's a most of the time you, you've got a huge advantage. Yeah. Now, every, every once in a while, I still end up with with something that i can't use um <laughs> yeah giganto and yeah that, or i've gotten null a few times without any uh yes. cards yes. yeah so but but i mean more often than not so I, I put that one really makes a difference i put the white hot room in the middle it, it can be useful but it's not it's not make or break it can it can definitely help Right. All right. To finish out our discussion here about last season, let's talk about some of the either the popular decks or your favorite plays or anything that struck you during the gameplay of last season. And I'll kind of start here. Definitely notice that destroy decks, destruction decks were on the rise. And again, that essentially shaped me to try and figure out counters to that all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to I, I don't want to be what they I think the term was a destruction main. I, uh, which I guess is like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to mainly play destruction. I don't want to be that guy that plays destruction because everybody else is playing destruction. I'm trying to figure out ways to get around it. Most likely what I was playing with is usually something that had armor in it and it had, and I had, um, Cosmo. Aside from that, I was seeing a lot more high evolutionary than I was Galactus. Galactus was a big problem a couple seasons ago. And now I'm, I wasn't running into that very much at all, but, High evolutionary was definitely still out there. So usually I was if if I was creating a deck, I had to have Luke Cage in there just so I didn't have to suffer thing throwing stuff at me. <laughs> and then I prefer I play without Luke Cage. <laughs> yeah. I think you I mean, really, there are a lot of cards that he just essentially wipes out either abilities to, uh Locations. Scorpio, you know, 
yeah, locations as well. So he's extremely useful. Yeah, lo- and lo- low cost. I mean, a- again, like we were talking about with Echo, there, there's not a disadvantage to having him in your deck. It's just, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, it sucks if uh, Rogue or Enchantress uh, takes him away, but uh, that that doesn't ha- happen too often. But yeah, there's times where he's just two points and that's it. But man, uh, when Jotunheim or Negative Zone or the yeah. thing comes out, you're glad to have him. Oh, for sure. I wrote down here, there were a couple times I was running into, uh, well, I was more than a handful. I was running into a Spider-Man Storm Professor X um, deck, uh, lockdown deck, pretty much. Was that before there, or after they uh, tweaked Spider-Man? It was after. And there's st- huh. He's still out there, and he's still being a pain in my butt. Like, they're still doing that. I saw that there is a Thanos lockdown deck out there, and it was like one of the... I don't know when they run these tournaments and how they run these tournaments either. I assume they probably run them kind of like just me and you have a game, yeah. um, but a friendly battle, I assume. But anyway, I guess, you know, there's a Thanos lockdown deck out there and it's one of it is the it is uh, the best deck right now. Hmm. So I did run into that a few times. You see the Infinity Gems and blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden uh, here comes Professor X. I did see that. Uh, I Put down here, are you Spider-Ham a lot? I don't, I mean, why not? Uh, yeah. You know, you, if you could cancel out some big ability that's going to be happening, do it for two cost. And I can't remember, I was at the beginning of this season or the end of last, it, well, I shouldn't say the beginning, uh, the beginning of the Rise of the Phoenix where they uh, they essentially nerfed Spider-Ham a little bit by yeah. giving him, okay. Yeah, so put him up to, to a two. That was part of their uh, anti-bounce deck strategy. Which I I'm not using Spider Ham quite as much, but I I don't really think it's because of that. I I think I'm just you know trying trying other things. Um, because I mean yeah, still at two two, he's he's totally worth it. All right. So I wrote down here, you know, currently uh, the season hasn't ended yet. We got a few more days, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm at the mid seventies, and I've been there for a long time. I started making a comeback using my Shulkanaut deck, it was like all of a sudden nobody had an answer to that deck. Mm -hmm. And then of course I hit the seventies and well, everybody's got an answer for that deck somehow. The, the decks that I, that I used uh, last season, I mean, I had a bounce deck before I realized it was called a bounce deck. The changes they made didn't really stop it. I think I had to tweak it a little bit because spider ham went up to a a two cost, but I just, I wasn't having much luck with that or my, uh, I call it, I call it the factor trio deck which is my Silver Surfer deck, but rather than call it Factor 3, which is a group of villains so obscure that I've never even read a comic with them. It's just from uh, the old Marvel role-playing game I heard about them. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> um, and then Trio, of course, the, the uh, German group uh, that was responsible for Da Da Da. Oh, my. Okay. I know the song. Yeah, have, uh, you you and Mark should do a Metal Hammer of Doom on that album. Uh, sure. <laughs> Yeah, if, uh, if if you ever want to hear a cover of Tutti Frutti uh, in German, okay, uh, that is also really depressing. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, good times. <laughs> also, uh, the only example I've ever heard of Irish German techno folk. Irish German techno folk. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'll. Uh, it's it's something. That's a genre. Yeah. No, it's just one song. Um, <laughs> Tura Lura Lura Lou. Anyway, but uh, yeah, none of those decks were were working for me. So I started going back to uh, like my Destroy deck, my Boosters deck. That got me almost to 90. And then it plunged back to 86 because everybody was hitting me with Killmonger. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, there's an algorithm. It knows. Go ahead. But that's. That's what bugged me is like, you know, I'm like, OK, yeah, maybe Spider-Ham is too good for one one. But it's like, well, you just you just can't have a one cost card like that. I, I forget exactly what they said. I should have written it down, but it was some of the effect of like, oh, it's just, you know, it, it just really derails entire decks. And I'm like, what does Killmonger do mm-hmm. every flipping time? Yep. I mean, granted, he's a three three, but it, I don't know. There was a while there that I just hated Killmonger. <laughs> Mainly because outside of Michael B. Jordan, he's not that impactful a character. You know, it's like what we were talking about last time with the, you know, my problem with Patriot is not that Patriot's a bad character, but he shouldn't be better at Captain America's shtick and snap than Captain America is. Exactly, exactly. Killmonger, outside of being played very well by Michael B. Jordan, should not have the clout he does in this game. I agree. 
I agree. I mean, even though they've they've tried to push him in the comics more because of Michael B. Jordan's performance, it, he he doesn't stick in the comics. You know who would have been? Oh, if somebody else should have Killmonger's power. Uh, it, well, take Killmonger out and put Bullseye in his place. There you go. I yes. mean, that would be a pretty... Yeah, I, I think that'd yes. be pretty fitting. I, I, I agree, because Bullseye is... Yes, uh, yeah, that that would be perfect for for Bullseye, and Killmonger can do something else, <laughs> you know, or or, or, or even Carnage. Um, I mean, I just, but I mean, I mean, they're literally going, they're going with the literal interpretation of his name, I guess. But uh, yeah, I just, I mean, I know, I know Killmonger from Christopher Priest's Black Panther run, and so that yeah. that alone should make me feel fondly toward him. But I don't like him in Snap. Don't like him. He makes me angry. And I think he's more consistently disruptive than Spider Ham has ever been. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, I even I don't remember if it was in this this deck or another one. But I put armor. I was getting smacked around by Killmonger so often that I put armor and Cosmo in multiple decks where I wouldn't usually have them. Exactly. I I was doing the same thing with against those destroy decks. Now, but the card that I saw, you know, I, I, I don't have the the statistics and the data to back this up, but I'd say the card that I saw increase in usage more than anything else was this season was magic yeah and they dropped magic from a five cost to a three i mean she's in almost all my decks now because why not yeah um, and if i don't play her some my opponent does usually yeah i was gonna say somebody had mentioned that they were like well i don't put magic in my deck anymore because i know my opponent's gonna have them so it's, i'm gonna get turn seven anyway <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it it's almost weird to me now when I I'm like, wait, no turn seven. Uh huh. Which is which is odd considering there have been a couple games early on where I was like, oh wait, there's a turn seven. Sometimes <laughs> I was the one who played Magic, and I'm like, why isn't the game over? <laughs> yeah, you know, we're having a theme emerging of me not being very observant. <laughs> but first of all, I think she's now the uh, premier location destroyer. True. Instead, I mean, of I still Witch. see a lot of storm, but. Scarlet Witch is random, and Rhino, Rhino's predictable, but why not give yourself an extra turn? Yeah. And then uh, Storm, I mean, Storm definitely ha has her, her uses, but I'd, I'd say Magic's head and shoulders above all of them. I agree. I impromptu listing, I'd put Magic 1, Storm 2, Scarlet Witch 3, because she can really throw a wild card in there, and then Rhino... Not bad at all, but just, you know, you know exactly what you're going to get. You're just going to have a neutral location. Mm -hmm. Scarlet Witch yeah. can come back to bite you, but she can also, I, I know I had one game, I think, where I was losing and I played her and I turned the location into the bar with no name and won. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Can't, can't predict it, though, but. Uh, nope. No, so, but yeah, yeah. Seen a lot of magic, seen a lot of limbo getting countered more. I've, I've had been like, okay, and I'm going to do this on turn seven. And then, oh, crap, there's no turn seven. Uh, yeah. Legion. Is particularly good at that. Legion, that's right. Yeah. The other one whose adjustment I, I thought made a big difference, at least in my usage of, and I did see him more often, is Living Tribunal. Yes, that needed to happen. That buff yeah. needed to happen. I've been I've been using him a lot now. I even put him into my my move deck because those cards, if things go the right way, can get pretty high powered. That's and true. so I actually put him in that one and um been using him a lot. Uh and I, I, I thought at one point, I'm like, oh, him and Iron Man, that would work well. And then somebody played Iron Man Living Tribunal Onslaught on me. Mm -hmm. um, so that I immediately made that deck. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't always get it. Don't always get it to work. But yeah, he's not uh, he's not overpowering now, but he's a lot more. You know, I, I I'd said before when we talked about it, we both got him for six thousand, and I said he's he's definitely he's probably worth three thousand. Now I'm I'm gonna say he's definitely worth three thousand. Yeah, I I usually like to play Living Tribunal last because I feel like if they know that's what you're doing, then they can you know if they got something they, they can a, they can abandon a, a location right. You know that the, they they can just concentrate on on building it up, whereas. If if you've got him coming, you know I, I usually try to look. It's like okay, I know I'm going to lose this location, but I, I, I if I can just edge him out on on one of the other two, and then yeah. I take the third one, then, then then we're in good shape. So I usually try to keep him till the very end. Mm -hmm. Got gotcha. you. And uh, it's worked so well that I'm still in the 80s where I've been the whole time. And like I said, the only reason I'm even that high. Is because I started. I, like if, if I hadn't started there, I don't even I don't even know if I'd be in seventy right now. 
So, but but yeah, I, I went back to a lot of the old standbys, mainly move and destroy. Although I, you know, I threw some others, I, I threw some some newer cards in, or tried a few different things, but it was mainly those others. Um, played a lot of uh, Null and Venom. Oh yeah, classics. Yeah, classics. so because uh, that that was the only thing that was getting getting me to move anywhere. Got you. Well, all right, let's move into our next section here. Uh, it's Conquest, um, which was a game mode that dropped, I think, last season. Not not yep. this season, but last season. And I still haven't played a whole lot. <laughs> I, I don't think I play, I think I played it that one game, and then that was it. I didn't play after that. So w- what about you? Somehow I got one Infinity ticket left. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I should probably play it more just because... I, I I keep going like oh, I'm gonna go play Conquest. I'm just gonna play one or two games, and I keep playing. And I'm like, well, I should have done Conquest and seen if I could could have gotten something else. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm about halfway through. I know last time it, it was abbreviated, so they they brought it in partway through the season, and I I got um you know I got the variant, and I, I'm not gonna hit that uh, this this season, okay. which, which is okay. I don't need you know French Revolution, you know Les Misérables, Mister Sinister. Um, <laughs> It can be interesting. As a friend of mine pointed out, that's actually where you can test out decks because, you know, you just go to the proving grounds. Maybe you get a ticket, maybe you won't, but it doesn't affect your ranking. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I need never, to. never I, even occurred to me. I need to start making use of that then. That'd be so, nice. Yeah, that, 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 that's where you can, can test stuff out. So Smart. Thanks a lot for joining us. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for the next installment of Snap Materials.